All right, we're here with Liz and Louie from Holy Child. Just popped in from Milwaukee here in Pittsburgh. How's everything going? Good. Good? Yeah. We've been on the road for a while. Yeah. Um, we're almost done. We have this show and then another show tomorrow in Toronto. And then we're done for two weeks. Yeah. So I think we're just like, it's cool. It's really cool to be on the road and be playing live in front of people and that's really invigorating and amazing but it's also nice to take a break <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah so i think we're excited for that too yeah like this tour started off at, at a nice easy pace the past few days have kind of picked up we've been racking up lots and lots of miles and we got some sun today so i feel like at the moment i might be a little bit out of it but <laughs> come show time i think we'll be okay yeah yeah, I'm sure we'll be fine. Nice. yeah. so you've been out with fits and the tantrums which yeah. is a massive opportunity how did that come about how did that come about? Um, you know, these things happen at, with so many different forces, yeah. but I think a few um, determining factors are, um, first of all, Lisa Fitz's manager came to one of our shows in LA in January. Um, and she and I kind of hit it off. She's so amazing. I was wearing at the time, for that show I had on a latex dress and um, I don't know if you've ever worn latex before. Mm, uh, yeah, I can't say that I have. Uh, you know. So like, you have to like put lube all yeah. over your body in order to put it on. It's crazy. So my friend was like, I have the perfect dress for your show. And I was like, cool, thanks. She was like, do you have any lube? And I was like, no. And I thought she was joking. And she's like, don't worry, I'll bring it. And so she shows up at the venue and like loops me down. I put on this dress and it was crazy. And it was kind of like a conversation piece after the show. Everyone was like, that dress is insane. Is it plastic? And I was like, no, it's yeah. latex. So anyway, Lisa um, Fitz's manager was there and we had like a conversation about latex clothing. And I thought she was amazing. I didn't know who she was. I just thought this woman is amazing and so funny. And um, then she ended up being Fitz's manager mm -hmm. and I think it's through that, um, our manager is friends with her, and then our through, we have the same booking the same? agents as yeah. well. Um, so it's kind of like similar world. A combination. And, yeah. Of yeah. It's yeah. really nice. It is a really great opportunity. Yes. They're amazing. They're killing it right now. Their yes. songs are awesome. And they've yeah. been at it for a while. And not yeah. only that, their fans are so sweet. Yeah. Well, that's a great combination. Um, yeah. Uh, it yeah. seems to all come together yeah. for a reason. Yeah, it's nice. Stars align Very nice. sometimes. Nice. It's nice. Um, so, uh, speaking of stars aligning, uh, seems that you guys met in the right place at the right time at the George Washington, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and Liz, you were a dance teacher? Did I get that right? Yeah, yeah. I wasn't dance, I was just a taking dance and yeah. minoring in dance okay. at GW. Um, but yeah, flash forward when we were living in LA, I was teaching mm -hmm. dance. Um, but yeah, Louie and I met in my dance class. Yeah, um, I feel like the stars, they definitely won. That was cool how that happened. You know, yeah, fortuitous. <laughs> uh, Liz approached, I was the musical accompanist for Liz's dance class. And um, she, I, well, you first approached me, we shouldn't forget this. You first approached me, I was playing some Radiohead. Kind of, <laughs> I was like rearranging Radiohead songs on like piano and playing drums at the same time and trying to keep up with Liz's dance teacher who was really demanding um, for the musical accompanist. And so I was able to keep up and I was rearranging these Radiohead songs and Liz approached me after that class and I was like, hey, I like that Radiohead song. And I was like, oh, cool. Like, who is she? She's cool because a lot of the dancers, they, they, weren't, they weren't focused on the music. They were just trying to keep up with this teacher. Possibly and they not focus on Radiohead. Probably, probably didn't know, <laughs> a lot of them didn't know Radiohead. And I, I didn't really think much of their musical taste, no disrespect to them. It's just different, <laughs> right. different worlds. But then Liz comes up and is like, nice Radiohead. And I was like, oh, cool. And then she came up to me again like a few weeks later uh, proposing a collaboration where she would uh, live um, performance. There was, it was like live performance art in the middle mm -hmm. of the street of, in D.C. Uh, painting a blank canvas with like a half nude, practically nude body, um, which sounded wild. And I, I'd be- My music body. Yeah, <laughs> if I, if I And then I'd be accompanying musically for that. And um, uh, it sounded like a crazy idea. And I said, yes. And we started just kind of jamming informally off of that and writing songs and got distracted writing our songs. And so here we are today. Cool. Yeah. Um, so where did the two of you kind of gain that pop sensibility that you have? Um, yeah, that yeah. is a great question. So we, we both are the people who are obsessed with music. 
Like, I have always been obsessed with music. Louis has been the same way. Um, so when we met, it was just, like, about music immediately. Like, oh, my God, you like, like, everything from, like, Thelonious Monk to Everclear to, like, No Doubt to... Classical. So. Classical, Katy Perry. Yeah. Um, like... Broad, it was broad. all over the place and we we're like this is awesome that you're into all of this stuff that I'm into because I feel like I can get done with anything if the music musicianship is quality yeah. um, and so yeah the pop sensibility definitely just I mean personally and I think this goes for you too just comes from being an avid music consumer mm -hmm. in our culture like when I was little um, probably at the age of seven like I had my radio in my room like always listening to the radio and going back and forth and the radio often plays pop and mm -hmm. so I was getting down with pop at a very young age and at the same time like discovering my own stuff and really liking some more experimental things um I actually also think oh you don't say I don't remember no what do you say? I was gonna say um I, th I feel like our writing um when we were living in Washington DC was much more exploratory we weren't really sure what Holy Child was or is uh, it wasn't, I feel like, until we moved to L.A. when, um, I mean, the scene in L.A. is so cutthroat, so um, the standards are so high, like, if you go out and perform or produce or write, like, you really are, like, your competition is the ceiling. It's, like, as high as it can get. It's invigorating. Yeah, and, and so I feel like we got, I feel like we got invigorated, inspired to kind of sharpen and focus our craft, and um, yeah, there's a lot of pop, like, that's kind of, like, where... Yeah. Pop is pretty big for in For sure, but at the same yeah. time, like, our earlier stuff still That's was true. really pop-oriented. That's like, true. Like, we had written Best Friends and Diamonds. And That's true. Um, That's, yeah. So, I, f I feel like there's always this, like, pop yeah. concept. Yeah. I mean, personally, like, I had come out of a period where um, I was painting a lot and showing my paintings. Like, I was living in D.C., but every single weekend for my senior year, I was going to galleries in New York and showing my art. And I had just gotten out of this place where, like, people weren't getting what I was making. Like, it was, in my mind, accessible, but, like, they would look at it and talk about it. And it took me having to explain what it was for them to mm -hmm. be like, oh, that's really cool. And I was so pissed off and, mm -hmm. like, done with painting. I didn't want to also do dance um, because I'm into modern, which is kind of weird as well. And I was like, I need to make something. I want to connect with people. I want to make art. I have things I want to say, but I'm done with making things that are like too abstract for people to understand. I want to make art that like people get it. It's accessible. I don't want to alienate anybody. But then at the same time, because it's accessible, they can digest it and understand what we're saying. So I think yeah. like that, that vision was always something that we wanted to do and like yeah. when we came together immediately that was like yeah. a really big thing for us. Combination of the fundamental music taste and preferences. I still think moving to LA helped like sharpen because we had like written some like straight up jazz songs in DC right. that were very far aesthetically from where we're at now and so we kind of like weeded those out and just sharpened and focused everything to what it yeah. is today. Yeah. But, but the lyrics to me are um, very non-pop um, especially when you kind of Broach the subjects of you know objectification of women, um, and there seems to be like a little bit of a running theme of that. Was that a conscious approach, or did that just kind of happen? Yeah, that. So you're right. The lyrics, especially for the EP, are all dealing with um, the role of the female in our culture, and it's really funny that was not a conscious effort. That is something that I've been. Um, studying and contemplating for a long time. When we were at GW, I actually got a grant from the um, anthropology department to do research on the sugar daddy relationship in New York City. So I was, for two years, I lived in New York. I interviewed all types of girls who were in these relationships, and then I started becoming friends with escorts and really trying to understand, like, what are the power dynamics in your relationship? Like, why do you do it? Why do the men want you? Why do the men, or why are the men willing to pay? And then I started interviewing guys too. And so I was in this really weird place. It was like 2010 to 2012 where I was doing this. And um, it has really informed my art. Um, it's like, it's something that has been on my mind. And like, the reason I wanted to study the relationships, like the cross-generational exchange relationships mm -hmm. in New York was because I was 
I was so fascinated but ups upset at the same time. Like I didn't know, I couldn't make sense of my emotions and I'm still kind of at that place. So the way we write songs, Louie and I write all of the melody and chord progression together and the rhythm. Um, and then I kind of go away and have the melody already and just write in the lyrics. Mm -hmm. And the lyrics for the EP came out very quickly um, and they all, it wasn't until I had recorded them and stepped back from them that I was like, oh, all of these songs are kind of dealing with the same topic from different angles. Like every time I fall is like a love song, being pissed off to be called a girlfriend, but then like liking doing domestic things at the same time and therefore am I a hypocrite or am I, does this make me a bad person? And then like pretend mm -hmm. believe is just like the ultimate hedonistic relationship that I crave, but why do I crave that? Because I know it's not healthy. Yeah. Um, and then Happy With Me and Playboy Girl have their own messages as well. So. Um, I mean, definitely art is a way for me and both of us to express ourselves and also try to understand where we're coming from in this world. I feel like I spend a lot of the time thinking about certain things and then once I make art, it's like, oh, okay, now I kind of understand a little bit more about how I feel. But I definitely don't feel like I've gotten to the point where I'm like, oh, I understand that, like, I'm, I'm past that. It's still something that I'm right. contemplating. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you had a really interesting quote the other day. You were, I guess you were looking through your diary and it was on Instagram. And you said, uh, I paraphrase, um, you're only truly honest with yourself when yeah. you're around other people or in front of other people. Um, what do you think you really meant by that? Yeah, that's interesting. I should find my diary. I have it. Yeah. Oh, it's right there. Um, yeah, that was an interesting entry because it happened so fast. Um, I think truth is something that's really interesting and I think truth is very scary to deal with, especially like self-truth and being objective with oneself and it's really hard to be objective with yourself when you're it's only you around because there's mm -hmm. so much rationalizing that can happen. It's like you didn't do that right and then in your head you're like, oh yeah, but maybe you did or maybe people didn't perceive it. Um, perception is something that I think about a lot. like what I perceive versus what other people perceive and like how people perceive me and how I perceive them perceiving me and vice versa and it's just this cycle. And I feel like um, when, when there's like a group of people, it's sometimes easier to um, try to understand like a, an ultimate truth or like a truth that is existing there. Um, and I also feel like, I think I was writing at that time about um, performing. I also feel like performing is so pure. And like, especially when performing and like being in the moment and singing a song and being right there, it's so pure and honest. And there's like, it's completely vulnerable, but true. And um, I was kind of reflecting on that as well. Cool. Yeah. So what's next for you guys? What is next? We uh, go back to LA. Wait, and then we have a few more shows at the end of the month and then spending August pretty much finishing our album. We've been working on it for the past uh, six, seven months. And then after, you know, fingers crossed, we do our work and we finish <laughs> our album. Uh, we it's get, close. Yeah, it's pretty. If we don't finish it, I'll be really bummed out. Like, <laughs> it would be been, weird. <laughs> yeah, we've been working our, working our, our asses off. and. Um, at this point, like the ball's in our court, and it, it feels good to have it in our court. So, um, and then after the album, we head out back on another North American tour with Mo. I don't know if you know. Yeah, Mo. Yeah, yeah, just cover those guys. She's yeah. so cool. Yeah, great. We're really excited. Yeah, there's Mo M O E, and then there's also I don't do you know the, the Mo? Danish Mo? Danish yeah. Mo. Yeah. Um, so we're going out with her, and that should be fun. That's playing kind of similar venues as Fitz, and it's cool. She, I think her demographic is definitely different. Fitz has a more probably like radio friendly um, demographic, and Moe's is definitely more blog tastemaker friendly. Yeah. And so far, our trajectory has been on that, um, mm -hmm. has been in that world with like the blogs and the tastemakers um, in, in that world. So we're excited. We played a show with Moe at South by Southwest, yeah. um, and it was so much fun. And yeah. then she went on after us, and it was so much fun. Yeah. And we, after the show, were like, You're Bye, amazing. Babe. You're amazing. It was really nice. Yeah. So it's going to be a really fun show. And then after that, we don't really have anything planned for the rest of the year. We anticipate um, probably something coming out in the fall. Yeah, like a new song, new song or something. We're working on a bunch of stuff. Yeah, um, a bunch of stuff. And yeah. then 
the album should be out in 2015. Yeah. So we're so, excited. We got, we got a lot of work to do to prepare for that. I'm sure so. we'll be back in Pittsburgh on the Mo Run. I think we will. If not Pittsburgh, we'll be in Philly. Yeah. Okay. Is yeah. Philly close? Five hours. Oh, you know, yeah, maybe far. maybe Cleveland, right. maybe Cleveland, about two hours away. So. We might be doing uh, Cleveland. Be doing yeah. Cleveland. Yeah. yeah, everybody yeah. plays Cleveland. Yeah, yeah. yeah maybe Pittsburgh okay. too. Then I don't know. Yeah, we should check this out. Okay. Yeah, but thanks right. for chatting with us. Well, thank you so, so much. much. Yeah, thank you, continued Alex. success, and hopefully we'll uh, we'll see you soon, and we'll look forward to the uh, to the new record coming out. Yeah, thank yeah. you so All much. Right. Great. Thanks yeah. for chatting awesome. with us.